Hi, my name is Renee Hobbs, and I am delighted to welcome you to the fifth Cultural Informatics Communication and Media Studies Conference. Here we are gathered online for a co-learning experience. And today what I'd like to do is talk to you for oh, just, a, just a few minutes about what we're learning and what we still need to know in the global media literacy education community. Let me share my screen with you and we'll begin. What we're learning and what we still need to know. My thesis statement is this, that the future of media literacy education is going to depend upon new models for supporting the lifelong learning needs of educators. You know, we always focus on the needs of students, but actually in this talk, I'm going to argue that the needs of educators uh, need to be prioritized if we're going to advance media literacy education worldwide. We're in a complicated arena now where the very youngest children have access to digital devices in early childhood and where creating media is an absolutely normal part of daily life. And where influencers of all different kinds uh, communicate the uh, perfect lifestyle, uh, the perfect uh, look, uh, the perfect uh, way to be uh, in ways that create a lot of social pressure for young adolescents. And we're living in a world where fake news continues to be a scourge on our understanding of reality and where disinformation is plentiful and where propaganda is a routine and ordinary part of political campaigns, political communication, uh, public communication and, um, and is spread from individual to individual uh, through uh, viral media. The rise of conspiracy culture has been of particular concern uh, to us here in the United States, as is the threat of violent extremism, which we used to conceptualize as a problem for other parts of the world until our own January 6th event, which helped us understand the threat of violent extremism right here in our backyard. All of these challenges are made more intense by the rise of algorithmic personalization as we each have a customized stream of media that we've programmed through our clicks, likes, and shares. And this makes it very challenging for us in media studies because uh, my Google is not your Google. My Netflix is not your Netflix. And our ability to make generalizations about people's media experiences is complicated by the extreme levels of personalization that are now an ordinary part of what it means to use media. That leaves many of us as researchers, as educators, and as teachers feeling a bit overwhelmed. So many interesting, complicated challenges, and how do we prepare students for uh, living in a world with, with challenges such as these? So I return to the basics, as it were the five big ideas at the heart of media literacy, as it has traditionally been defined as the ability to access, analyze, create media in a wide variety of forms. Back in 2010, when I wrote the plan of action for digital and media literacy, I added two new components to this definition of media literacy, the ability to reflect, using ethical reasoning, emotional response, 
collaboration, and the ability to take action using citizenship and activism, along with knowledge of cultural, political, and economic and social context. Now digital media literacy is a umbrella term that includes a wide variety of competencies that are necessary for daily life. Now, I want to introduce you to one of my own students, Sanjay, he's graduating this spring. Here he is in his graduation gown. Sanjay is the first student I've ever taught who was exposed to media literacy in elementary school, in middle school, in high school, and also in college. Because media literacy is not a one and done kind of thing. It's not a one shot program, it actually is like a muscle that needs to be strengthened through frequent repetitions. And Sanjay had the experience of developing his media literacy competencies all throughout his school years. So he is well poised for going into the world as a media literate adult. And we know from our own uh, studies that here in the United States, about one in three college students have had some exposure to media literacy in their elementary and secondary grades. Unfortunately, college students around the world may only get exposure to media literacy if they are enrolled in communications and media courses. And that's why we are strongly supportive of bringing media literacy into general education programs. Uh, these are my general education students. They are biology majors and physics majors and nursing students. And they're all enrolled in media literacy as a general education course. Now, at the high school level, we've got pretty good data from the small state of Rhode Island where I live that um, implementation of instructional practices for media literacy varies from one community to another. In the United States, of course, our school system is decentralized. So each school district essentially has its own curriculum um, because local control of schools is so important uh, to citizens in the United States. But th what that means is that uh, one community, say for example, Exeter, West Greenwich, they're, they're scoring a D, right? They don't have uh, great technology. Uh, the school culture is not supportive of media literacy and they're not implementing media literacy very much. Whereas up in Cumberland, uh, they have about the same levels of technology and school culture and student readiness, but they are implementing media literacy, especially in middle school and high school. So we think it's really important for us to have a better understanding of what's actually happening in schools and surveys that look uh, at the community level can go a long way to improving our knowledge. Now, globally, I was very, very impressed with the Digital Education Action Plan produced by the European Commission uh, in 2021 that basically argued for the need to reset education uh, and training for the digital age. Of course, they said in this report uh, that schools needed uh, infrastructure and connectivity and digital equipment. Absolutely, those are essential. And they also needed the ability to engage in planning and development for and bringing digital uh, media texts, tools and technologies into uh, education and training. But the one recommendation that I really paid a lot of attention to was number three, the idea of developing digitally competent and confident teachers and education and training staff. I think this is a unmet need that needs much more attention um, from those of us in the uh, education and in the higher education communities. Of course, the number four, number four 
item on the list is super important, high quality learning content, user-friendly tools, secure platforms that re respect privacy and ethical standards. Here we are recognizing how important it is for us to have uh, educators, uh, platforms, content, and infrastructure that help us engage in training for the digital age. But this report noticed that educators' learning needs were largely going unmet, uh, at least in the context of the, of the uh, European member states, uh, where teachers report a high need for training in the use of ICT technologies, and they may not be getting uh, much training. And they may not be relying on distance learning for their own development. Now, these findings were produced during the pandemic as we all made the hard pivot to online learning. But what we found was that online learning takes time and it takes time for a community to form. Over the past two years at the Media Education Lab, we reached thousands of teachers around the world with our Media Education Lab webinars. And over time, we gradually came to form a learning community. Based on this experience, what I began to notice was that when webinars are treated as merely a means to transmit content, to deliver a message, kind of like what I'm doing right now, right? That um, a community can't form but when we use the breakout rooms and the dialogue and discussion features of online learning, we can create a co-learning community. And indeed, what we observed in our work at the Media Education Lab is that teachers need four things in order to develop that confidence at implementing digital and media literacy pedagogies. They need to feel safe, they need to feel listened to. <laughs> they need to engage in guided and open inquiry. They have to be able to go ask questions, find information and, and, and be independent learners. And they also need to develop a sense of care and responsibility toward others, realizing that online learning is not a solo project, not something you do on your own. It's a team sport. So what's cool about it is that it can be done anytime or real time. We were able to discover the power of online learning to bring us together in a Zoom meeting, but also to bring us together when we were at different times through threaded discussions and through other kinds of digital platforms. We didn't have to be in the same time to learn from each other. We got a chance to experiment with online learning in our media logs on propaganda program, which received support from the US embassy in uh, Berlin. We brought together German and American educators for dialogue and discussion to begin to think about how propaganda and disinformation are affecting our own identities as educators and our students as future citizens. This summer, we host the 10th annual Summer Institute in Digital Literacy. This year, we're offering this program in Chicago, in downtown Chicago, and fully online. And we are discovering the opportunities that have become more noticeable in the context of the pandemic crisis that learning and teaching are beginning to change in powerful ways as we use the power of digital technology and online professional development to help teachers grow and advance their competence and their confidence. So I think I've shown to you that the future of media literacy education depends upon new models for supporting the lifelong learning needs of educators and that online learning is a big part of the future of digital and media literacy education. 
Thanks very much for inviting me to speak at your conference. Have a great learning experience. Thanks again. Bye-bye.